Hello everyone and welcome to the Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. On today's episode, what I wanted to do is uh, we're using uh, Luminar 4 as a standalone editor. And I wanted to show you uh, how you can use plugins uh, inside of Luminar 4, just like you do in Photoshop. You can, you know, start out here in Luminar 4, launch into some Topaz plugins, some Nick software, you know, whatever plugins that you want to use. It pretty much works with everything from what I can see here. Um, but there is one little caveat here. I don't think it does this with Mac machines. I'm not sure about Windows machines. So all you PC Windows users out there, let me know if you can launch plugins from Windows. Now I've seen different things on the internet that you can't do it. And if you can't do it, I think we need to really request this from uh, Skylum telling them that we need this. But I'd like to hear your thoughts. Are you having issues that you can't run, run plugins from Windows? But today I wanted to show you how you can uh, launch plugins, at least on a Mac anyway at this point. And hopefully this will be some help and some interest because I think this is a really valuable asset to be able to do this in your workflow inside of Luminar 4. So let's get started. Before I launch into uh, using plugins in Luminar 4, I wanted to just go to one of my favorite filters, which is AI Enhance, and go to AI Accent and just bump that up a little bit. I just think it makes the image look a little bit better, opens things up a little bit, okay? So this is really nice. So all you have to do is come up here to Edit and come down to Plugins, and you'll see some of the plugins I've used in the past using Luminar 4, but you can go to Other here and it'll show all your different plugins, okay? But let's start out here maybe going to um, Vivesa 2. Because Vivesa 2 is from the Nick Collection is a great plugin for doing some adjustments, local type adjustments on your image. So let's just pretend. And this image to me looks good, by the way, just the way it is. But what if I wanted to uh, lighten up some of this, uh, these ferns down in here in the left hand or bottom section of the image so I can come and grab a control point. And this is not a Nick Collection um, tutorial but I'm just going to use some of these plugins just to show you what we can do and so you can see the changes okay so let's just pretend we're going to uh, lighten that up a little bit now I'm going to hold the option key or alt key and drag this over and lighten that just copies that control point and move it over here and say what if I wanted to darken this up right here so let's grab another control point just click right here and you can adjust the circle of influence. Again, it's not a tutorial on this, but I'll do some tutorials on Vivesa 2 because I love Vivesa 2. And maybe I want to darken this up here a little bit. So let me hold the Option key and just drag this control point up into here just to darken that down a little bit. And maybe Option click it one more time and just put it right up in here. Okay, so there we go. And so when you're satisfied with that, just click OK. And that'll bring us back into Luminar 4. And check out what it does here. It makes a new layer, and it is called, let's go to layers here, Vivesa 2 layer, and it even names it, which is pretty pretty sweet if you ask me. And then we have the opacity, we have the blend modes that we can use with it, but let's uncheck it here. So there's uh, before the Vivesa 2, and there's the after the Vivesa 2. So that's pretty cool. So that's Vivesa 2. Now let's launch another plugin. Now you don't have to keep coming here and creating... Uh, for instance, uh, you don't have to hit the plus and come and add, create a new stamped layer or new adjustment layer. You don't have to do anything, okay, which is nice. All we have to do is come up to our um, edit here and go to plugins and let's, let's go into um, oh, something else I use a lot, which is Topaz Studio 2. Now, when Topaz Studio 2 starts to launch, notice I get this little... Uh, duplicate layer reminder just ignore this it really means nothing to us here this is uh, referring to photoshop it's just telling us you're using a background layer of an image from photoshop i'm really not i'm using it from luminar 4 but believe me it doesn't give you any problems here so just cl uh, click continue it's fine it it'll launch uh, topaz studio 2 now say in topaz studio 2 what would i want to do to this so let's just click on Add Filter, and uh, say for instance I wanted to, um, let me figure out what I want to do here. Maybe run AI Clear on it, you know, maybe just sharpen it up a little bit if there was any noise. Now this, I've already processed this image, so, but it could sharpen it up a little bit, make it look a little bit better. Now if I just click on the canvas here, you'll see the before and after. So yeah, it does sharpen it up. Uh, right there and AI clear is nice because it automatically does this and you really don't have to do too much in here 
But you could you have other adjustments that you can make here. But again, it's not a tutorial about Topaz Studio 2. But I just want to show you. So I could come in here and maybe do that. Okay, add some AI clear. Click accept. And in a few seconds here, we're back in to Luminar 4. And look, we have a layer called Topaz Studio 2. And it's on a layer. And you notice I have my Vivesa layer. Now when it does this, by the way, it does actually take all the adjustments here. And it actually stamps everything up to a new layer for you. So just bear that in mind. But you don't have to come here and, and click uh, Create New Stamp Layer. It does it for you. So that's pretty cool. If you've watched any of my Luminar 4 videos in the past, you know I love like the Mystical Filter and the uh, Orton Effect Filter. So, But I also love uh, the Nick Collection uh, Color Effects Pro 4, I believe it's called. And let's go to Edit, Plugins, and let's go to... Actually, I have it right here because I've used it recently. Color Effects Pro 4. Let's launch that. And there's a really cool filter in there called Glamour Glow. And I love it. It's an excellent filter. And I've just used it recently. So I can just... Any filter that's in here, if you want to get rid of it, just click X. And then you can come over here and choose from all these different filters. And there's great filters inside of uh, Color Effects Pro 4. But let's go back and put the Glamour Glow filter back up here. And it's like the Orton effect, really. But it's beautiful. It's a little bit different. So let's pull this glow up here. And we get this nice, dreamy look to our image. And I love this, too. So I love the Mystical Filter. But what if I said, you know what? Today, I feel like using the uh, Glamour Glow Filter in Nick because I love the quality I get. Okay, so let's pull the glow up. And then we can play with the saturation, give it more or less saturation, whatever we like. Maybe let's just, you know, right around there, I think looks good. We can warm it up or cool it down, whatever we like. So let's just play with it a little bit. Maybe somewhere right around there and say, okay, that's cool. Click OK. That'll save it out and bring us right back into Luminar 4. And it'll give me a new layer called Color Effects Pro 4. Now let's click the check here. There's before it and there's after. And I think it really adds a nice effect to it. But you know, I might say, I don't like it on this tree because I love this tree. To me, when I took this image here, it was all about this tree right here. I liked how it was being framed between these uh, pine trees here. So... So let's go and get a mask, edit a mask. So I can edit this uh, Color Effects Pro 4 layer, get a brush, and make sure I'm on the erase tool. And, okay, my softness, is, I always leave it 100%, pretty much, opacity 100%. And I'm just going to erase it off of this uh, tree right here. So now I've taken the Orton effect off that tree. So let's click the before, and there's the after. Okay, and now I've taken it off that tree there. So that's kind of cool. But say if I just wanted a little bit on there, I can come back here to Edit Mask, Brush, and then just come up here to Mask, go to Density, and maybe just pull that back a little bit. And that'll let just a little bit of that Norton effect, you know, come on that tree right there. So that's kind of nice. And then when I'm done, I'll just click Done here. So, whoops click it again it didn't go <laughs> okay so there it is so that is uh using another plugin but isn't that really awesome because i mean really this to me makes luminar for such a valuable photo editor especially if you want to get rid of photoshop if you don't want to use photoshop anymore but you really love the fact that you could use plugins in photoshop that makes it really an amazing piece of software now if you can't use it on windows machines that's kind of a drag and i think if you can't Luminar 4 really needs to fix that, and I hope they do that soon. So I hope you're watching Skylum. If you can't do that, then please make it happen, uh, and we need it. You know, Windows users need it, just like Mac users need it. As a test right now, I've never tried to launch one particular plugin, and that would be uh, DxO Film Pack 5, okay? So let me go ahead and launch that and see if it works. Because I love the XO Film Pack 5. It's something I use a lot. So it looks like it's launching it. Let's see if it comes back with a layer. And here it is. Uh, DxO Film Pack 5 is pretty cool. No, I don't want to do an update now. Remind me later. And let's just go here and... 
This thing will simulate different film looks and things like that. Let's just click on a couple of these and see if we like it. Okay, so what if I wanted to take this image into a black and white image? Of course, I could use Silver FX Pro 2, which is awesome for black and whites. And many photographers swear by that. It's the best uh, black and white conversion uh, software out there. But this is really cool too. And again, as I said, it simulates film. So I'm not going to do any adjustments to it. I'm just going to go ahead and save it out. Okay, and click on save, and let's see if that works. We're coming back to Luminar. Hey, it works. That's awesome. So, as you can see here, I'll let you know if I come, come up with any that do not work, but right there. Now, of course, let me click this off and on. And, of course, let's do our split screen here. So, here is our before and after, which is really cool. So, anyway... I just wanted to show you that you can use uh, plugins in Luminar 4, which is amazing, and I love that. But if it doesn't work for Windows, they need to get that fixed, and I hope you'll agree. So please leave comments and questions below and let me know about that, okay? I'd appreciate that very much. Well, one last thing, and this is cool. Anytime you do black and white, if you like the tone that the black and white gives you, but you want to use that for a color image, you can always convert your image to black and white and then come to the uh, blend mode here and change it to luminosity. And let me uh, click the checkbox here. So here's the before and here's the after. But you can see you can use the toning of the black and white and on on your color image okay so you can convert it to black and white and then just change the blend mode to luminosity so that's a nice feature so there it is if you haven't tried out plugins yet uh, using luminar 4 please do so I think you really enjoy that um, and also again I'm sorry for the little rant today but if you can't do this on Windows machines PCs if you can't do it I'm sorry, this needs to be fixed. Uh, Skylum have to fix this thing. So please leave those comments and questions below and let me know how that works for you. Hey, if you enjoyed this video today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And also, if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, uh, please consider subscribing. And if you do, click the bell notification icon. And this way, every time I upload a new training tutorial, you'll be notified about it. Well, thanks again for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see each and every one of you right here next time. But until then, happy editing. And also, the holidays are here. Happy holidays to everyone.